In today's class, we started talking about derivatives, and we use two different ways of describing the derivative. So here I have some function, f of x, and if I take some point, the derivative is going to tell me how fast that function is changing at that point. So that's one interpretation of the derivative, the instantaneous rate of change. Another way of interpreting the derivative is as the slope of the tangent line. Remember the tangent line is a line that just barely touches the curve. It doesn't cross it, but at this point it touches it, and it seems to be at least close to that point going in the same direction as the curve. Later on we'll learn more ways to think about the derivative, but for now the two things I really want you to remember are the instantaneous rate of change of a function, how fast that function is changing, and the slope of the tangent line to a function at a particular point. So with this in mind, we can try to find a, a more analytical definition of the derivative. And let's say we're taking the derivative of four. This is what it looks like. It's going to be the limit as h goes to zero of f of four plus h minus f of 4 divided by h. Now you really need to memorize this definition. You need to be able to come up with it very quickly. If you, if you really hate memorizing, or if you just want to know where it comes from, it's good to remember that to find the tangent line, we think about taking secant lines over a very, very tiny interval. So imagine I'm taking the secant line, say from here to here, the secant line is just the line that passes through these two points. And the slope of the secant line, remember, is rise over run. So my y value here is going to be f of 4 plus h. And my y value here is going to be f of 4. So the difference in my height is exactly what I have here, f of 4 plus h minus f of 4, and the difference in my x is just going to be h. So this bit here is the slope of the secant line from x equals 4 to x equals 4 plus h, and the trick is we're imagining that h being very, very small. We're imagining this point on the right getting very, very close to 4. Okay, so this is my definition of my derivative. Of course, in general, there wouldn't be a 4 there. In general, it would look like this, where perhaps I leave x as a variable so that I can find the derivative at any point I want, or perhaps I just plug in a number for x the way we plugged in 4 for x. Let's practice using the definition of a derivative to find the derivative of this function. Remember the definition looks like this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what happens when I plug these values, x plus h and x, into f. So if I plug in x plus h for x, I get 3 times my variable squared plus 1, and then I subtract 3x squared plus 1. Now I can simplify. If I expand this part squared, I get something like this, and I see this 3x squared is going to cancel with this 3x squared, and this plus 1 is going to cancel with this minus 1. So what I'm left with looks like this. Now I can cancel off these h's, and now I see the limit as h goes to 0 of 6x plus 3h, well this 3h is just going to go away. So my limit is just equal to 6x. That means that 6x is the value of my derivative of the function 3x squared plus 1. So for example, when x is equal to 0, the instantaneous rate of change of f of x is 0, 0 times 6. When x is equal to 1, my instantaneous rate of change is 6, 6 times 1. When x is equal to 10, my instantaneous rate of change is 60. Alternatively, the slope of my tangent line 
is equal to 60 when x is equal to 10.